Okay. Okay, well, welcome to another episode of Ecom at One. And today's guest is Chloe Thomas. Now, Chloe's books have been on our bookshelf at Ecom One and at home for about seven years. And, and Chloe's um, the author of five best selling um, e commerce books, um, but probably more, more known now for her podcast, where she's interviewed over 250 um, e commerce owners, store owners, marketeers um, over the last about five years, I think, isn't it, Chloe? Yep, it's been going for just over five years, which is yeah. crazy. So welcome to the podcast. Uh, I think um, it's about 18 years you've been um, all together in marketing and most of that's been obviously in the e-commerce space. So welcome to the podcast. Uh, great to be here. Always always nice to catch up with a fellow um, e-commerce obsessive. So I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> Thank you. So I think it'd be good to kick off and let everybody know just a little bit about your story, really, your career journey to date around e-commerce. Yeah, sure. Well, that could take us the whole show. So I'll, but I'll try and keep it, keep it short for you. Um, so my, my career starts off at Barclays Bank in their marketing department, which was, I kind of ended up, my, my career story is mainly accidents at the beginning. So, um, <laughs> so accidentally ended up there because I wanted to do an internship when I was at uni and uh, finance sounded a bit boring, uh, HR sounded a bit fluffy, uh, marketing was pretty much all that was left. So got an internship and then got a job and then here I am <laughs> almost 20 years later still in marketing. Um, left Barclays uh, because it wasn't the right place for me and got yeah. applied to pretty much everywhere in order to leave Barclays. And the first job I got was with a retailer Pastimes, which some of your older listeners may remember, was a high street online and catalogue retailer uh, in the UK and, and beyond actually. And I was hired to look after their catalogue mailings and then got a little bit obsessed with the internet. And when that went under, which I swear wasn't my fault, um, <laughs> I ended up working for a, uh, a mail order business consultancy as their first ever head of e-commerce, yep. which was um, an awesome time. A bit like being the kid in the candy shop. I had yeah, six yeah. brands, each of which wow. were doing over... Oh, well, over seven figures. I think all of them were on. Um, none had ever sent an email. None had ever had the products on the website the same day as the catalogue went live. <laughs> Crazy idea. <laughs> um, so I got, I got, kind of had a year of just, just doing cool things with those brands. Um, this, this would have been about 2004, 2005, I think. And then that turned into a marketing agency that I ran for 10 years that evolved into becoming a Google ads and Facebook ads agency sold that three years ago now and yeah. um i was running e-commerce master plan the agency side by side and now i'm all e-commerce master plan wow well, that's a whirlwind isn't it that's literally everything you can think of i think in terms of uh, you know, so, so corporate catalogs e-commerce yeah. stores coming out of the uh, ether <laughs> running yeah. your own agency and then obviously now obviously spoken to at least 250 plus e-commerce professionals on your podcast so that's uh Looking forward to getting stuck in and hopefully sharing some absolute nuggets with our. I listeners. hope so. That's what I. That's what I want to do. Share some good tips for them all. Good, good. So, what would you say? Let's kick off then with a straight in there. What would you say has been your biggest success story in e-commerce? Oh man, um, <laughs> for an actual e-commerce client, yeah. the one I always remember is is back at pastimes. Actually, which is a terribly long time ago, but it was. It was something which was really groundbreaking then and now is still groundbreaking, which is wrong. <laughs> it shouldn't be. Uh -huh, okay. You should be doing this, everybody. Um, so at Pastimes, we had a fantastic line in uh, resin garden ornaments that looked right. like Victorian fairies. Okay. <laughs> um, these were, uh, a, lot of, a lot of customers were very passionate about our fairies that went in the garden. And they, you would occasionally wandering around the streets of the UK, you would see a garden full of our fairies. And it was a somewhat pleasant sight, but a little bit scary at the same time. So we had some very, very passionate customers. And we had um, new gar a new range of garden fairies had come in for the new spring season. And we segmented the customers who, who always bought fairies from the customers who had never bought fairies. And we sent an email to the fairy people about the fairies and we sent an email to everybody else about something else. We only sent one email a week at that time. And the results were just astounding from the fairies people. But of course, we got better results from everyone else because we weren't telling them about a product they had no interest in, which, you know, not 
not groundbreaking, shouldn't be groundbreaking it's now. Like we talk about it a your lot. email list. Yeah. And, and people that have bought something similar or had an interest in fairies in this instance. Yes. And it, actually personalizing and targeting. Yeah, and it was it was a you know it was it was something we were incredibly proud of at the time because it was really hard to do it. But but I mention it because I still see so many businesses failing to do simple, obvious stuff like that. Despite yeah. the fact these days the technology you can do it at a couple of clicks if you want to. Why, why do you think they don't do it? Why? Because it is it is so simple, isn't it? Is it they're just looking for other things or? I think it, it's the it's the they having too many options and not knowing where to start. So. Yeah. The, the question I get asked most often by, um, by e-commerce businesses is, Chloe, what should I be doing? Yeah. Um, you know, my, my focus is on the marketing side of things and traffic driving uh, and mainly around the stuff you can really track, like the email and the ads and those kind of things. And, and that's what I get asked is, what should I be doing? And I spend, you know, the little bit of client work I still do these days is generally yeah. answering that question. And there's so much we could be doing. It's trying to work out what we should be doing. Yeah, I think I totally agree. I think it's like that shiny object syndrome that um, digital marketers and internet marketers mm -hmm. and e-commerce marketers, um, you know, what's this new thing? Or oh, what's this all oh, Facebook pixels and da -da 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 -da, whatever it, obviously these are all, all have their place. But when you find something that maybe works a little bit, keep going, keep pushing, keep trying, mm -hmm. keep going through with it. And then, yeah, so a simple thing like segmenting a database and um and pushing through that's brilliant so that leads us quite nicely on to um sort of my next question so what would you say um in terms of i'm an e-commerce store owner right now mm -hmm. um it is now um it's the 24th today um we're at 24th of march um quite a challenging few days for most businesses in the uk um over this last couple of days and quite a few challenging weeks potentially ahead with the COVID-19 sort of outbreak pandemic yeah. um, announcements um, over the last couple of days. A lot of um, the UK workforce are now at home, working from home. Um, obviously some e-commerce stores or a lot of e-commerce stores, I believe are still operating as we record this. I know speaking to a lot of our clients and our account managers today and their clients, um, quite a lot of changes happening um, out there. Some challenges with deliveries potentially, which is going to be a real problem. Um, getting stock, drop shipping, etc., going to be a definite problem. You know, closing in, closing in. What are some of the things that the listeners could really focus on now? You know, maybe this next couple of weeks while they're at home or they're and their marketing teams are at home, um, that they could really focus on to really help to quite quickly. I think if we think about speed. What are some of the speed elements that they could implement right now to help them? Well, I think it's kind of, it's like almost like a daily changing picture at the moment, what's possible, what consumers are doing and all the rest of it. So I would say that, you know, whenever you've got to move that fast, whenever it's really crucial, then the first thing to do is to check what you've already got live is working as well as it could be. Yeah. You know, it's not, oh, we need to do new things. You know, whether you're someone who's seen your sales plummet or whether you're someone who's seeing your sales grow crazy, which I know there's some of you in both camps out there at the moment. Yeah. It's about keeping the basics right. You know, have you got your basic automations in place? You know, your abandoned baskets and your welcome campaigns. So you're giving yeah. as good a, an experience as possible and you're getting the sales you should be getting. Have you got um, your Google ads? Are you keeping an eye on them as we're yeah. going through this? Because with these sudden, if you haven't got, if you aren't keeping a decent eye on your Google ads and all of a sudden demand and search volume for your products has gone, gone through the roof, you might suddenly be spending an awful lot more than you think you should be. Yeah. And, you know, that's a debate which I'm having internally at the moment is should, you know, we, if you're seeing that, I know, I know people who've got huge growth in their SEO performance. It's like, wow, should we capitalize on that with our Google ads? Or actually is this just a blip that we should, we should just enjoy the profit rather than thinking about the turnover at this point in time. And I think that's yep. something to keep in mind. So I guess my summary amongst that a bit random tip would be to optimize what you've already got to keep yep. optimizing, which I say an awful lot, yeah. but you know, look at what you've got live and make sure it's doing the job it should. And, and then potentially look at spending more in channels you already know. I don't think now is the time to test new things. Yeah. Good. Broadly speaking, because the data is so unusual, you know, um, yeah. Richard, you said don't, we're doing this on the, the 24th. There's a client who I'm due to do a Q1 performance review for next week. And I'm just thinking, 
is there any point in doing the Q1 performance review? Because it's a huge chunk of work. It's, it's a big piece of time. But actually, are they going to look at it? Yeah. And then, you know, because is it going to be of any use at all in yeah. this quarter? The last two weeks of the quarter are going to completely skew it either either way, depending on what they do. Yeah. 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 And, and it's like, yes, it, it may be that when this is all blown over in three months, six months, 12 months time, we go back and review Q1 2020. I knew it said 2019 then, 2020. <laughs> um, but, but I'm not sure it's the best use of, of our time, me and them, in the yeah. next couple of weeks to do that. So I think it's taking a bit of a step back every yeah. now and then and not just being head in the detail going hell for leather crazy at stuff. Yeah. You get, actually, hold on a second. Day what? to day, what is yeah. the most useful thing I can be doing? So what are, we, what are we using now? So look at the channels, look at the email, look at the ads, look at the Facebook ads, the Google ads, the abandoned cart, the technology, the mobile side of the business, the mm. checkout, and just sort of go in almost like the 80-20 of, of, of all those <laughs> and then just yeah. go in. So where, they, where they're doing well, just keep working them, keep working them, keep an eye on those ad spends. Like you say, obviously there's going to be a lot of movements. I saw a graph today in, in different industries. Another, another agency had written a, a, a cracking report, actually, um, about the different um, verticals that were in. Obviously, some are seeing huge growth. You know, mm -hmm. we've got quite a lot of clients in the veterinary and pet um, area, in food as well, and, and those two areas are obviously flying. However, <laughs> they're doing yeah. well, but the, the challenge is they have got their own challenges where they can't get the goods out quick enough. They haven't got the staff in to... To, to pick and pack so everyone's coming off the you know out of the offices which is rightly so to come and pick and pack but still they are keeping an eye some of them very closely you know obviously on their on their ad spend because there could be these massive spikes but obviously doesn't mean that there's massive profit or a profit yeah so again i think it was great what you said about the um you know keeping an eye on the you know turnover is one thing but if you're burning you know that the margins on that turner on your on your ad spend you know and the row ass is poor mm. or, profits are poor then obviously it's a pointless exercise you're going to be very very frustrated at the end of this you know whatever does happen with the with COVID-19 you may have a better exactly and you know we you know the number one thing at the moment is to bear in mind is we we just don't know what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks it might be that by by next week deliveries are restricted to certain product types you yeah. know, and our DPDs and our APCs and all the rest of it are only allowed to deliver food maybe or or medical supplies we don't know. You know, there's still questions. I've seen some people asking questions um, today of our warehouse staff. Is that a key job or not? As yeah. we're, as of today, not supposed to be leaving our homes unless we have to and various other, other things. So, yeah. it's, you know, there's, there's a lot that's going to keep changing. And whilst I think we, you know, we shouldn't be cutting back our spend, we should be asking questions about whether we should be increasing our spend at the moment. I think if you can increase it and maintain profitability, by all means, go for it, grab yeah. that demand. Yeah. But have a have, bear in mind that you don't want to, if it's not part of your business plan to do so, you don't want to be getting orders at a loss at this point in time yeah. because it's not necessarily a good thing. Plus, of course, the overall costs of delivering are potentially going to be higher at the moment if you take into account the fact you've probably got less skilled workers doing your pick and pack if you've got the people down for the offices because yeah, yeah, i know yeah i know when i've tried to answer the phones or pack, <laughs> pick and pack i'm not very good at it um yeah. so so yeah. the cost of that the chance of errors customer service costs are going to be up because people want to know when it's coming um i placed an order with a, a high street retailer two saturdays ago it was supposed mm -hmm. to arrive this saturday yeah hasn't yet appeared yeah. uh, they told me on by on saturday that it they knew it hadn't yet appeared and they were working on the backlog. No communication since then apart from to tell us about yeah. their store opening hours. So I'm not going to chase them up because I get what situation they're in, but I suspect they're getting an awful lot of people going, where's my product? Yeah. Well, I have to admit, I'm, I'm, I was almost one of them this morning. I ordered it. Uh, obviously we came home on Tuesday and um, webcam wise, I was like, right, I better just get a better webcam for, for the, uh, what I thought would be a few weeks at home or a maybe a few days initially, but then, you know, obviously dawned on me quite quickly, it'd be a few weeks. I went onto Amazon, no webcams anywhere. This was five days ago. Um, and then, so I ordered one from somewhere else. Um, and it sort of said next day, but that was four days ago and it's not arrived, um, which, you know, I'm not, obviously I've not contacted them. I thought I'll just leave it for now. 
Um, I think it, you look great, by the way. <laughs> yeah, this is just using a, this, the, the webcam that comes with my Mac, so it's not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> it's the 15 lights that I've got on me that work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't ordered my lights yet. Yeah, so yeah, there's just a lot of unknowns, isn't there? I think that's mm. the thing, and it is sort of like, and a lot of people start saying day by day, obviously we're, we're getting that, we're getting the news from, from the government on a daily basis, and I think, you know, in terms of the e-commerce stores listening in, Obviously, quite a lot will have happened by the time they're listening to this. But even so, you know, when, like you say, when um, you know, if there's more challenges with delivery, um, certain products that need to be delivered next day, then maybe we, you know, we adjust bids or we, you know, we adjust mm. our marketing on those specific products. You know, we've got like, like fresh food, for example. It's going to be quite challenging to the, to do, you know, four or five day delivery on that. It's going to be no no good. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I think the. The advice is kind of the advice we should be following at all times anyway, which is make sure we've got the basics right. Make sure what we're doing is actually optimised and don't just dive headlong into it. Look up every now and again and go, actually, yeah. should I be doing this? You know, yeah, yeah. Is this still something that's worth doing in my business? Which, you know, is is important every day of the year. But when we're in, we're when we're up against it like we are at the moment, it becomes ever more important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Chloe. So what would you say is your biggest frustration with e-commerce stores? What are some of the things that really gripe you? Uh, about us pages and welcome campaigns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, More. Uh, about us pages, the about us page that just has, here's our address. Yeah. It's a very depressing thing because humans like to buy from humans and there's all kinds of neuromarketing proof and all the rest of it about how you can go about very quickly very easily increasing that link you know the the whole the, the idea of the story of the problem the solution to yeah. the problem the social proof to put pictures of the founders why you started the business stories about the products members of your team it's not difficult to fill that page with something valuable but to just have your address is a waste total waste yeah, um, sorry, go on. Which, which then comes on to, to the other side of it, which is welcome campaign. It's a little bit similar. It's people who just have that welcome campaign, which is welcome, here's a discount. You know, really? it's like it, you should be educating them about your business. By all means, give them a discount if that's what you want to do in order to get the email sign up. But the welcome campaign should be your opportunity to say, this is who we are. This is what we stand for. Find out more about our products and to convert that subscriber into your perfect customer and yeah. you know a, a one email welcome campaign is generally not worth it and you know just a just a discount code you are yeah. missing a trick it's um it's late it's well i say lazy it's late it is lazy <laughs> on both counts isn't it yeah, yeah. i mean I, I think telling people about you is incredibly hard to do um you know i say this and i have no welcome campaign all right <laughs> be honest i don't have one um i have an about us page that i always hate whenever i get around to looking at it, I go, oh no it's it doesn't say anything it should do but, but at least when it's you're, there. When you're talking about yourself if you've got it's quite hard isn't it it is <laughs> that's the hardest thing you go, oh, well i've done this we'll do that we'll do that oh no that's cringy but yeah people want that uh, oh yeah i mean they're two brilliant ones I'd, yeah so about us you know that's the opportunity to tell your story isn't it to mm. sort of so, so, sort of the the the, um, the history behind the people, the brand, where we started, because most mm -hmm. e-com stores started in a bedroom somewhere, or you know, or as a small concern, quite often, and people love that history and, of where they started to make their soap in their front room, and now they've got yeah, and yeah. they often start because the founder has exactly the same problem that they're fulfilling for their customers. You know, yeah. there's an amazing yeah. one that I use a lot in in. Um, in presentations and when I'm talking about this to people which is farm toys online UK business and the founder started it because she's a mum of kids who love horses and tractors and farm animals yeah. and she couldn't find the toys anywhere so she you know she'd be traipsing around the shops trying to find the right tractor that would go with yeah, the, yeah. the muck spreader yeah. and all the rest of it and and she started a business and she tells that story really well on the about us page and you yeah. can just imagine there's mums going Yes. Yes, yes, you get me, you yes. know me, you understand my challenges. <laughs> just like me. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that, that to the point where if they're walking down the high street and they see the product they want, they're probably still going to go home and buy it from Julie at Farm Toys Online because yeah. that's the business they have the emotional connection with. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, there are lots of, of 
you know methods out there of how to work out to get your story and it's really just a case of finding the one for you and i guess the other thing to say is a welcome campaign and about us page are never complete so give it a stab put it up there yeah you can always change it next week but if it's got something about you that isn't that's better than your address then that's really worth doing please yeah, 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 yeah. please everybody <laughs> and i think yeah like yeah i'm just thinking god yeah I, when i had to write mine on on, on um on the agencies it's like yeah oh, and then that's like yeah. oh, okay <laughs> and then i think yeah we need to go back and redo it because we're not quite we were you know the yeah, on seo traffic lab we very much are not the agency we were you know when we wrote it i think you know so yeah i think um yeah, it's, um, I think using imagery in there as well, like where they're, you know, the sort of, mm. this is us at the kitchen table when we started, this is us in our first warehouse, this is us in our, yeah. you know, sort of the, the story. But yeah, so the welcome campaigns is probably a bit more tricky for people potentially, because it's, I think, come about us, you know, obviously they know the history, they might be a mm. bit cringy writing about yourself, but welcome campaigns, what would, be, what would be some sort of tips there that people could use? And um, I suggest that you start off by sitting down with a white sheet of paper, and yeah. trying to work out what you would want to tell someone who's yeah. finding about, about your business for the first time. So you've kind of got the, the key facts about the business, which would include um, the, all those, the, the about us and that kind of thing. You've then got uh, social proof. There should be social proof in every single one of those that you put out there. Yeah. Uh, whether it's your re review score or the yeah. fact you've been featured in the press or yeah. some actual reviews from customers that should be in every single one to bring that, yes. that trust yeah. element in and then you need to be clear on what the call to action is going to be as well um, and also what you they may want to know about the product what you ought to tell them about your product and yeah. then when you've got that list you can start working out how that then fits into a sequence of emails because yeah. i said you should have more than one but you maybe only should have two or maybe you should have 10. Yeah. I don't know. It depends yeah. on how many things you've got to send, got to get yeah. out to them. And within that, if you want a couple of really quick and easy things to put in, um, have one email, which is just what your customers love about you. So it's literally just a customer review, a customer review, a customer review. Yeah. So easy to create, but so powerful in showing your customer, your new customer, what your existing customers think is great about you in their words, brilliant, a brilliant email to do. Um, and also if you've had reviews in the press or you've been featured in things, do a whole email just about that. Yeah. Really yeah. simple emails, high value content. That's going to tell a bit about your story without you even trying, so these are which will help. So when you say for clarity then, so the guys that are listening, so you've got a welcome email from a welcome sequence, sorry, um, from people that have bought something from you. Mm -hmm. but then you've also maybe got a welcome email from somebody that signs up to a newsletter with that would that diff that would differ i use um thank you for picking me up on the clarity on that so <laughs> i use welcome campaign to mean a new email sign up sign up yeah something which happens after someone's bought for me is a post purchase sequence yeah okay so i am exclusively talking about new email sign ups who haven't yeah. yet bought from you yeah yeah, two very different things. Yeah, but that's not to say some of these emails you might reuse in a post-purchase yeah. sequence to people who haven't already got the welcome campaign, or people yeah. who yeah who want to send it to twice because sometimes it's worth doing that too. So, do you have any um, preferred sort of providers for the email? Um, obviously, I know if you're using Magento, Shopify, da -da 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 -da, obviously a wealth a wealth of um, different platforms out there but have you got any specific sort of tools and tricks or tools and, that you'd recommend um, email um, provider, email um, providers yeah um, I don't have a preferred yeah. um, I think there's a good fit for each business based on yeah. what they're currently doing so yeah. I think it's worth looking at what you want to do what you should be doing who you need yeah. to integrate with and then find out which platform works for you. Um, I hear good things about Clavio, Digital, Omnisend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I use Omnisend myself. Um, yeah. And, you know, and I've done a quite a lot of work with all three of those companies and they're, they're great. And Pure360 as well, they're doing some really yeah. cool things with their, their, new, their new branding and their new approach. Yeah. But it, it is about trying to find the right one because um, that's where where the power is, is finding something that works for you works and does you. what you want to do. And it's, mm -hmm. it's as important a decision as picking the right website provider, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, no, good, good. I do think, yeah, I do. I, I, yeah, I think they're two brilliant ones, to be honest. 
and quite simple to implement, which is the key as well, you know, to write, especially the about us, you know, to be yes. able to say that about us. Obviously, the, there's no real technical requirements there. It's, it's creative, it's content, um, the welcome sequence. Obviously, you need to have a provider to send the emails, which should be relatively straightforward. Um, and then just decide on the, that initial length of sequence. But like you say, start off with two, but maybe start off with two, get it live and then build it out. But at least it's live. At least you, you're winning because yeah. you've got something rather than nothing. So yeah, oh, they're two, yeah, they're two great ones and, and quite, yeah, ones, um, yeah, really good, really good. So um, how would you say e-commerce businesses could set themselves apart from their competitors? It's mainly about story these days. Um, in the UK, we operate in the busiest, most competitive e-commerce space in the world. Yeah. Um, and consumers have no end of choice. They can buy it from someone huge who they trust. You know, they can get it from Tesco, from Amazon, from eBay, yeah. the huge companies, or they can get it from you or they can get it from one of your competitors. They can, they have so much choice. And, you know, we've got the basic triggers like price and delivery, but actually if you can put some emotion into it and you can tell your story and you can build that connection with the customer, be trustworthy, um, yeah. prove that you're trustworthy and treat them well, that's how you're going to, you know, that's, that's really kind of the only USP left, I think. Yeah. yeah. Trustworthy. It's the, the human of. connection. Yeah. Yeah. So who would you say is doing that quite well at the moment? Oh. A lot of places are doing that quite well, but is there any sort of newer brands that you think are doing it particularly well that are stand out? Um, uh, snag tights. Snag tights. I think I saw that. Um, it's it's my company, isn't it? Yeah, they've been, oh, they've been around for two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they sell tights, but they have taken customer, uh, being customer focused and putting the customer first to the nth degree, to the point that they started the business with one page, just one page, and they only built additional pages when the customers asked for them. Yeah, wow. Um, wow. They, and they don't do email marketing because the customers have never asked for email marketing <laughs> and they have an amazing Facebook page and just there. I, I interviewed the founder, um, Bree Reed a couple of weeks ago. It's actually, it's live on the podcast already. And it, I was kind of slightly flabbergasted by some of the approaches they've taken because I talk a lot about being customer focused and thinking about what your customer wants, but my God, have they taken it yeah. to a level beyond no. what really I was just kind of like, I was listening to this going, <laughs> there, was a, there was a lot of oh hold on i need to ask you a question i'm just like still processing what you're doing <laughs> sure, um, yeah. oh wow well i think well, that, well that's definitely one for everyone who's listening to this podcast to go and listen to them so that's yeah. on your that's on your podcast recently. yeah it's yeah. uh it's the most recent one live as we record this it's number 265 265 okay we'll but, make sure that's in the show notes as well then yeah oh thank you but yeah i'm still i'm still slightly processing that conversation with Brie because it's hugely successful business yeah. and yeah, just, just amazing. And with such a low price point product that, as well. That's what I was going to say, cause I've, I've, I think I remember the numbers were in the, they're doing millions, aren't they? And Two million a month. Yeah. That's insane. Two million a month and they're selling tights, tights, which I don't know the price of tights, but I'm guessing they're like 10, 20 quid or less. Uh, more like a fiver for, oh, a pack no. of, for a pack of several. I mean, it, it's crazy. It's yeah wow that's amazing that is incredible okay yeah, huge huge respect for brie and all she's she's achieving with that business it's just i'd love to get i'd love to get brie on the podcast i'll have to see if um we can have a chat with her a later date yeah, yeah. well uh, we'll sort that out I'll, I'll i'll see if she'll you know email me afterwards yeah <laughs> fantastic okay so story i think in the is the is the big yeah. takeaway there, you know, let's have a look at what Bree's doing, but I think, um, you know, just be very trustworthy, honest with what you're doing and sort of connecting with the customer. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so in terms of like connecting, we're talking about um, connecting with the customer, being purely sort of customer focused, but what mm -hmm. other ways and what other things could e-com store owners do to be really focusing on the customer? Well, I think you have to listen to them. That's the, the number one thing. Um, one of uh, a great way, a great really simple tip that, that I've done with a couple of clients now. And I'll be honest, the first time I did this, uh, 
I discovered it by accident because I was, we'd done a big customer survey, asking them all kinds of different questions. And um, it was for a, a holiday company in Cornwall. And one of the questions we'd asked is, why do you come to Cornwall on holiday? And so people have written loads and we'd had several hundred responses. And I was looking at this going, oh God, how am I going to process this into something usable? Because the individual pieces were, you know, were really good, but it's like, oh, I'm not sure I could be bothered to read through all of them, which you should all read through all of them if you do this. But it was like, how do I do this? And I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll chuck it into a word cloud tool. Okay. Yeah. You know, so uh, for those of you not familiar with word cloud tools, what that does is it takes all the text and it puts all the words in the text into a graphic. And the more times a word is used, the bigger it appears on the graphic. And so um, we had things like beaches and sea were quite big, but we also had peace and tranquility came through quite big and we'd never considered using that in our marketing uh, we rarely talked about beaches either which was just just truly appalling um but we all live in Cornwall so why would you talk about the beaches the beaches are just there um so so what we did with this word cloud was we printed it out and gave it to each of the team who created content or who spoke to the customers as a visual reminder of the things the customers cared about Nice. in relation oh. to our product yeah so simple because you know you look at it you go oh beaches is quite a big word and we haven't spoken about beaches in <laughs> social media for the last week i yeah. need a picture of a beach um yeah. and it, it was so smart that is so smart literally i think that is so clever and so again so simple so simple because you yeah. know you get everyone gets into that rut of talking about the same thing on rotation yeah. for us it was dog friendly holidays huge still hugely important to talk about it but we talked about dogs far too often and peace and tranquility never <laughs> we never talked about <laughs> peace and tranquility so so yeah it, it, we came across it by accident but i've used it for a few people since and it is um it's yeah. super powerful so you know that's, just a yeah so that starts off with a questionnaire where yeah, just like just like looking for sort of one word answers sort of thing in the questionnaire. Or well, you, no, you, you want them to write lots actually. So you want it to be a question like um, if you were a beauty retailer, you might say, What's important to you in your beauty regime? or How do you choose your beauty products? So you want them to write a paragraph because the more they write, the more um, juice you get yeah. Yeah. to turn into the yeah. word cloud and you should also read through them all and see what key things are coming out but um but yeah it's, it's a way to quickly improve content marketing that's so that. that i love that i love I'm, like you said about processing that uh, your your previous um podcast yeah that is um yeah i can see how we could really use that ourselves in, in a lot of areas like so if, obviously like you said you can your social media team have then got that cloud. Your people on the phones have got that word cloud, and they're you know, or if you're in that instance, they're booking a hol is it a holiday type? Yeah, this yeah. So they have phone, their phone reps, their business development people are when they're on the phones to discussing a potential booking. They've got the cloud in front of them. Yeah. Uh, all their marketing material, obviously, their about us page, their social media channels, every touch point you've got the. You know, you'll be using probably the two or three same areas, but you've probably got a nice dozen then to go at just to, you know, just to tick off, you know, those, yeah. those ones that are, that you're missing because you're seeing them every day. Like your instance where you're, you're at the beach every day. It's like, hey, who comes here for the beach? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, you actually want us to talk about beaches. Oops. <laughs> yeah. And especially for smaller businesses, you know, if you're hiring a, a freelancer or a VA to do your social media, it's such a quick way of helping them understand yeah. these are the things our customers care about in relation to our products yeah, it, yeah. so much easier yeah no chloe that's genius that is so good that is so smart and so simple i love it thank you for that so Pleasure. now we've touched on email marketing obviously i know you're a big fan of email marketing and i think a lot of people are sort of like oh do we don't really use email or you know email does it still work well clearly it still works um you know, based on a couple of things you've mentioned already, but what else would you say about email marketing? What what things could um, e-commerce, what e-commerce, what things should e-commerce stores be doing with email marketing? So you talked about a welcome campaign, mm -hmm. um, and um, what what else would you say they should be doing? I mean, I think abandoned baskets are a bit of a no-brainer. Yeah, um, but I think the for me, the, the thing which is separating the men from the boys in the world of, of email marketing is properly integrating it with other channels to just have 
you know a mailchimp account over there somewhere yeah. which does its own thing and doesn't talk to anything else is it is it is just losing out on the power of it these days it should be kind of the the center of your customer database yeah. decision segmentation whatever you want whichever yeah, word you want to put into it yeah and therefore it ought to be linking with your audiences on your ad platforms yeah you know so if you've got someone who's going through a welcome campaign they're seeing similar messages on facebook in your ads on facebook or your ads on instagram you know if this week your email was all about the quality of your products they're seeing posts about the quality of your products to reinforce that message yeah. and and with other marketing channels like um you know programmatic mail you know physical mail or catalog yeah. mailings or push marketing so taking that approach and bringing all your marketing together is a great way of usually not increasing your marketing spend but of increasing the yeah. income you get from it from it all because the sum of all those parts is much greater than the individual yeah. parts if you get them working together because it's all joined up so they're seeing mm. yeah yeah segmenting again and seeing the same message well the, the message that's relevant on yes. the, all the all the platforms and all the different touch points yeah so you're a big fan of email marketing um lots of options out there again would you would you have any sort of recommendations i mean i, I think i think i know what the answer is going to be it'll be dependent on uh, where you are and what you do and how sort of the size of the business but is there any sort of really let's say you're uh, you're doing 100 grand a month on shopify um is there any sort of go-to tools um, um providers you would recommend for that no <laughs> but <laughs> i thought i, I was gonna say, get you there <laughs> yeah you're not gonna get me um i think key things if you're reaching those that kind of level of turnover key things you must have in your email platform is that it fully integrates with your e-commerce store so yeah. all the emails you're sending are going out through the same system so you yeah. can do the order confirmations in there so you can see how well that's working and immediately send it into no, post purchase not campaign. using your abandoned carts from your store you're using it from an integration yeah yeah, yeah. so and you're you're getting all you know the best possible quality of every campaign you send out yeah. and all the tracking and it's all in one place so you don't forget about it you know sometimes i i analyze people's results and i'm going oh apparently you have an abandoned cart and they're like oh yeah <laughs> yeah we had we couldn't do it ourselves we got someone yeah. else to set it up i'm like okay what does it look like i don't know yeah. i haven't looked at that in ages yeah. it's like it still says hi first name or <laughs> yeah and, it, and it's, it's the branding from 20 years ago with you know none of the current yeah, product yeah. range and you're like right yeah. i remember it well we we don't do any econ builds anymore you know we stopped about two years ago but yeah i remember uh, going in and, you know, the, the welcome email abandoned cart and it would mm. be literally you know Hi, we see that you are interested in X and da 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 da. da. You know, that, and the language in some of those um, default settings was so bad, and I can imagine how many are still out there. Like five years yeah. later, still, like you say, branding wise and message wise, and it'll be just all over the joint. Yeah, so just pulling it all into one central system, so all those touch points are, you know, you yeah. can then you can look at a individual account, email address, customer, client. It's like having a CRM, isn't it? Ultimately. Yeah, and kind of like the product database and the analytics and they're all in one place. It just makes it so quick to do things because I know yeah. a lot of people have seen great results from some abandoned browse activity. Um, and, you know, there's, there's so much you can do if it's easy to do it. And there's tools out there now which will make it so easy to do it. Yeah. You've just got to have the right tools in place and then you'll be, you'll be flying. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. So... Um, so I know you um, go to a lot of events. I know that you speak at a lot of events, um, a lot of events over the years. Um, um, what would you say would be your sort of top couple of expo recommendations for e-com store owners? I know there's quite a lot to go at and there's obviously, again, quite a lot of variables there, but what's your sort of go-to if you're, you know, an e-commerce store owner, uh, marketing manager, where, where would you, what would be in the diary this year? assuming that COVID-19 is not going to yeah. throw it, throw it all out any further. Um, I think the, for all retailers, I think you have to either go to e-commerce expo or IRX internet yeah. retailing expo each year, yeah. which are the big free events where yeah. there's a certain amount of content and where you can troll the stands and annoy all the, uh, the supplier side people by not buying from them. Yeah. Um, you can learn so much in a day at one of those. I prefer IRX. Um, yeah. 
and that's not entirely because I get to uh, to chair it each year <laughs> so it's probably slightly biased but I I prefer the vibe and I prefer the feel yeah. at that event um yeah uh, so so you have to go to one of those yeah then I guess it depends on on what you're after there's been some brilliant events I've been to in the last year or so which have been run by software vendors okay so the dot digital summit the yeah. meet magento events yeah and they kind of take it to another level because of a couple of reasons one everyone in the room has something in common so you know all if you're a magento and you go yeah. to meet magento all the content is relevant yes you know you can see someone speak on stage about something and by the end of the day you can be um, you know, on a trajectory to get that put in place on your site. Yeah, yeah. Which is just so brilliant. And, you know, the same thing, the kind of coming from a similar angle is the fact they tend to be very well funded. Quite yeah. often you have to buy your ticket to it. Um, there's always sponsors. And the person who's putting it on has a vested interest in making sure it's really relevant to yeah. the people who are on that software platform. Yeah. So, the content tends to be at a higher level and you tend to get a couple of really amazing people who you would never see anywhere else. Like last year's, uh, last year at Meet Magento, they, in the UK, they had, uh, I've forgotten his name, guy who runs a uh, mage talk or awesome podcast from the U S came over and was just unbelievably inspirational. Wow. Another, another guy who's written a, you know, top business selling book on psychology who, just took my breath away and yeah. then at dot digital uh, summit last year they had niles rogers <laughs> nile rogers who was brilliant and took all of his musical knowledge and brought yeah. it into the world of business and was absolutely oh, inspirational oh, wow. wow wow so those events um you know obviously it's got to be a software platform relevant to you yes. uh, but they can be ridiculously yeah. powerful yeah there are, there's some great ones there i've not been to most of those to be fair well the the, the, the um e-commerce expo and irx are two that i do go to and we exhibit yeah. at a little you know infrequently i should i say irx has just been postponed hasn't it so it that, has yeah maybe, i think they announced new dates didn't they at the moment obviously that may change second um, third of september yeah, it is at the moment september um, and then the e-commerce expo was crazy busy last year when we went, when I went on the yeah. first day, I think they say about 14,000 maybe is it or something? I can't remember that. I think it was somewhere there, which it was, a, I've never seen an expo as busy. And I think that's just the space in general as well. Mm. It seems to be getting busier, busier, busier. And it's just such a good buzz at these conferences. You know, I think, um, I would really recommend, you know, anybody listening in to, to go to those recommendations and, you know, at least, you know, get them get start looking at the when they're on exactly obviously things may change around a little bit at the moment and things are getting postponed yeah. but, and commit and i think you know you get to spend that day out of the office as well which is what we all need to go and spend some time with other you know like-minded people and the people that have been there done it and you know that are, that are sort of doing maybe exactly what we're doing or what you're mm -hmm. doing in your e-commerce store you know and they're speaking on stage how they scaled from you know zero to whatever it may be you know, and those specific sort of suppliers that you might be looking for for your email marketing or whatever it may be, they're, they're usually all there, aren't they? And it's, they are. yeah, they're, they're really good. Well, thank you for that, Chloe. So I like to end um, all the podcasts with a book recommendation. Now, I know you've got quite a lot of books behind you there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, but those are all mine. So I should yeah. really recommend someone else's, shouldn't I? Which... Yeah, I'd be keen to see what your additional book recommendation would be. Oh, this okay. one. Yeah, The Ultimate Guide to E-Commerce Growth. Yeah. This yeah. is by um, Ian and Mark Hammersley. Yeah. Um, I've had, I, I know Ian quite well, um, had yeah. him on the, the show myself yeah. or my own show. And it's just a, I think I personally, site plug, it goes really well with my com book e-commerce <laughs> marketing. Um, because my book's all about getting traffic to your website. And this is all about them making your website work as well as it can be. They've okay. broken it down into seven key KPIs yeah. and it gives you what, you know the average benchmarks are it talks you through why and how and how to improve those numbers and it's just it's a book i wish i'd written myself i'm slightly <laughs> jealous <laughs> but um we recommend but, that. that's good that yeah. would be my my number yeah. one 
it uh, obviously goes well with your book <laughs> it, it does they kind of go hand in yeah. hand and they, you, you you drive the traffic with your book and then they help you to convert more so get the kpi yeah. in a one percent to two percent to two percent to four percent etc yeah fantastic well thank you for that so i think um there's some exceptionally and brilliant takeaways in that's gone so quick chloe that's it has hasn't so it quick. i was sort of just look, just looked at the clock it's like no way um so thank you so much for being on the podcast it's been absolutely fantastic um for the guys that are listening in that want to find out more i know we've we've touched on a few different things that mm -hmm. where they can find you but where exactly would be the best places to find out more about yourself and the, and the brands um if you go to ecommercemasterplan.com you'll find links to the podcast to the books and um, everything else i'm up to brilliant well, thank you once again. It's been an absolute blast. and um, My pleasure. I look forward to um, catching up with you again.